Her mother is dead. I beg you, uncle, love her as I would were I here, and ensure that she is in receipt of all that is due to her as a child of mine. That is simply impossible. What is right can never be impossible. She is black. She is my blood. But she is black. A detail you chose not to share with us. What has she been named? She is bad. After her mother. Dido, Elizabeth Bell, Lindsay. She takes your name. I am not ashamed. Welcome back everybody to Movie Buffer. Hello. Thank you for stopping by once again and for our new people who are finding us. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Tonight we're going to be reviewing Belle. Belle is a 2013 British period drama film directed by Emma Asante, written by Misan Sagai, and produced by Damien Jones. It stars Gugu Mabatha Roy, Tom Wilkerson, Miranda Richardson, Penelope Wilson, Sam Reed, Matthew Good, Emily Watson, Sarah Gedon, Tom Felton, and James Norton. The film is inspired by the 1779 painting of Dido Elizabeth Bell beside her cousin, the Lady Elizabeth Murray, at Kenwood House, which was commissioned by their great uncle, William Murray, 1st Earl of Mansfield, the Lord Chief Justice of England. Very little is known about the life of Dido Bell, who was born in the West Indies and was the illegitimate mixed-race daughter of Manfield's nephew, Sir John Lindsay. She is found living in poverty by her father and entrusted to the care of Mansfield and his wife. The fictional film centers on Dido's relationship with an inspiring lawyer. It is set at a time of legal significance as a court case is heard on what became known as the Zong Massacre, when slaves were thrown overboard from a slave ship and the owner filed with his insurance company for the losses. Lord Mansfield ruled on this case in England's Court of King's Bench in 1786 in a decision seen to contribute to the abolition of the Slave Trade Act of 18. Dido Elizabeth Bell Lindsay was born in 1761, the natural daughter of Captain Sir John Lindsay, a British Royal Navy officer, with Maria Bell, an enslaved African woman in the West Indies. After Dido's mother's death in 1769, Captain Lindsay takes Dido from the West Indies slums and entrusts her to his uncle William Murray, 1st Earl of Mansfield, and his wife, Elizabeth, who lives at Kenwood House, an estate in Hampstead, then outside of London. Lord and Lady Mansfield raised Dido as a free gentlewoman with their other great niece, Lady Elizabeth Murray, whose widowed father had remarried a woman who pressured him to disown Elizabeth. When the cousins reach adulthood, the Mansfields commission an oil portrait of their two great nieces, but Dido fears that she will be portrayed as a subordinate, similar to other portraits she has seen depicting aristocrats' black servants. Dido's father dies, leaving her a vast sum of $2,000 a year, which is about $50,000 today, making her an heiress. Lady Elizabeth, by contrast, will have no income from her father as his son, from his new wife, has been named sole heir. Arrangements are made for Elizabeth to have her coming out to society, but Lord and Lady Mansfield believe no gentleman will agree to marry Dido because of her mixed race, because she black. Fearing lower ranking men will only marry her for her wealth, and that a marriage to a lower status man will reduce her rank and shame the family. Lord Mansfield decides she will travel to London with her cousin, but will not out to society, and he asked her to take her Spencer Great Aunt Mary's place as the keeper of the house, with the implication that she will not 
Mary. So a spinster, as we know, um, and an old maid are all kind of coming from this kind of era where this is a woman who never married for whatever reason and she is able to work or to be part of a family and she basically the family kind of takes care of her she works for her wages and becomes the head of the house but still she's considered a spencer an old maid Whew, well now after all that history here's my review of the movie it's a beautiful movie very romantic if you love royals and period movies as i do then you will love this movie this is not bridgerton even though i give total props to bridgerton but this is a true story about a black royal adjacent lady based on real events even though she was a part of this family by blood and they did treat her well she was not allowed to eat with the family when they had company and and she stated she was not allowed to be out as a lady looking for a mate like her white cousin. It was thought that she would end up being an old maid as we stated before. One of the scenes in this movie that was very interesting to me and very relatable to me as a black woman was when she was trying to comb her hair and a black servant showed her how to take care of her natural coarse hair. It was such a compassionate moment that I literally cried when I first saw it. The love story between her and John de Vignier, a vicar's son who seeks apprenticeship from Lord Mansfield in pursuit of a career as a lawyer FYI, a vicar is the priest of a parish, the revenues of which belong to another, while he himself receives just a stipend. So his father was poor. John Devenier is idealistic and passionate in his moral convictions and meets with an abolitionist group. Also, another FYI, in the 18th century and 19th centuries, most young people became lawyers by a apprenticing in the office of an established lawyer where they would engage in clerical duties such as drawing up routine contracts and wills while studying standard treaties. This became known as reading law. Therefore, there was no bar exam to complete. However, in 1885, Massachusetts became the first state to employ a written version of the bar exam. But even so, back then the bar exam only consisted of essays until the multi-state bar exam, MBE, was added to the bar exam in February 1972. And that is my contribution to you of random information whether you wanted to know or not. <laughs> The movie starts in 1789 when the slave trade was still a thing in England. Belle's father learned of her mother's death, so he came and got her and took her to his uncle's to be raised. He wanted to give her a life she was born to, one of opulence and privilege. It is obvious that he loved her mother very deeply. Belle is raised with her father's family. When she reaches the age of marriage, she is not able to seek a mate. This was common knowledge. So in the movie, the suitor of her cousin tried to push up on her rather aggressively, and she ended up warning her cousin about his behavior of potential rape, and her cousin didn't believe her, thinking that he would never be interested in her because she was black. However, as we know, that rape and aggressive sexual behavior has nothing to do with desire and more to do with violence. This caused a brief rift between the two, but what her cousin did not know initially was that she was in love with John Debonair and would consequently go on to have a love affair and eventual marriage and family with him. Now, here's a bit of the truth, historical, more historical fact. This is a true movie story with some dramatic liberties. But here's the actual truth. Sagai chose to set the major events, Bell's and Elizabeth's love affair, and the Zong case in the same year the painting was made, when Bell was about 18. But yet, in reality, Bell married at age 32, long after Lady Elizabeth 
was married and no longer in touch with Bell. Dido Elizabeth Bell was never given her father's last name, Lindsay. Instead, she took her mother's last name, Bell. In the movie, it was said that Dido's mother was dead, so no one could take care of her. Hence, why Sir John Lindsay took Dido in to be taken care of by his maternal uncle. In actuality, Dido's mother, Maria Bell, was very much alive and given property by Sir John Lindsay in Pensacola, Florida. She also purchased her freedom around the same period that Dido was born. Sir John Lindsay would go on to father a total of five illegitimate children from five different women. Dido Bell's real inheritance was nowhere near the amount suggested in the movie. Dido sadly wasn't left anything by her father, Sir John Lindsay. Her father, the naval officer, died in 1788 without legitimate heirs, bequeathing only a thousand pounds to be shared by his reputed children. Another two illegitimate children named John and Elizabeth Lindsay, as noted in his will, and nothing for Dido in 1793. Lord Mansville bequeathed Dido Bell, 500 pounds as an outright sum and 100 pounds an annuity, while he left Lady Elizabeth Murray an astronomical sum of 10,000 pounds, even though her father was in line to inherit her uncle's title and entire wealth. So real Lady Elizabeth was far from penniless as suggested in the movie. The truth was basically fictionalized, you know, to make it more beautiful, the more romantic, the more, you know. I think the one truth in the movie was that apparently her father, Belle's father, did want to give her a life. So the truth was basically fictionalized. Maybe they thought the only reason the Earl took her into his home is because of the love of her father not because of the fact that he alone felt she deserved it. But why would her father even bring her to them if he did not have a special feeling for her and her mother? Love is very complicated, folks. But have you watched Belle? What do you think of the movie and the historical facts? Do you care that the movie separated so drastically from the historical facts? And why do you think it did so? Please leave your comments below. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. And even if you didn't, the fact that you got here, just go ahead and like it, okay? And as always, thank you so much for watching. Peace, two fingers.